Hey folks, how you doing? It is just about the end of application season and we're here today to talk about one of my favorite things that is deer and antelope in Wyoming. We already talked about the elk application. That deadline was January 31st. But now we have the application deadline for deer and antelope. We're going to get into this video, we're going to give you the highlights, but if you want the real heavy details, go to GoHunt.com, sign up for their Insider. They've got way more than what I can provide in a video. And when you sign up for the Insider, if you use promo code Randy, they're going to give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. And they have maps, they have research, they have strategy articles, and the best draw odds for all the Western states. So. The deadline is 11.59 p.m. the night of June 1st, 2021. And that's 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. Before I get into this unique way that Wyoming does their draw and splits it into two pieces, I'm just gonna talk about what the upfront costs are. In Wyoming, for us non-residents, they give us kind of the first fork in the road. Are you going to apply in the special draw, which is more expensive and you pay a premium, supposedly for better draw odds, but not always, or are you going in the regular draw, which is the normal price draw, it's less expensive. In most instances, the draw odds aren't as good. In Wyoming, we don't have to buy a non-refundable license like in a lot of other states. What you do is when you apply, you give them the full fee up front, you pay a $15 transaction or a $15 application fee per species and a two and a half percent credit card transaction fee. So you got to think about when you apply in Wyoming, you front all the money. If you don't draw, you get back everything other than your $15 application fee and your two and a half percent transaction fee. So the two species we're talking about, deer and antelope, like I said, there's the regular draw and then there's the more expensive special draw. For deer, in the regular draw, it's $389 that you got a front, plus your application fee, plus your transaction fee. In the special draw for deer, it's $677. And if you go to pronghorn, it's not that much less. For the regular draw, it's $341. And in the special draw, it's $629. So those are very reasonable fees compared to a lot of other states. And here's what makes Wyoming even more reasonable. Right now, at least as the law currently exists, up to 40% of the tags go to non-residents for deer and antelope. That, that, that's a level of generosity that is... Yeah, it, <laughs> It just, I'm trying to think, other than Colorado, they're very generous also. Wyoming and Colorado are the two states with the greatest percentage of allocation to non-residents. So let's talk about this point system Wyoming has. It's called a modified or hybrid preference point system. And going back to all of our videos, a preference point system is the applicant with the most points gets the tag. Dale is my camera guy today. He's got 10 points. I got two. If we apply for the same unit, the computer says, okay, Dale, you've got 10, you get a tag. The next person with nine gets a tag. There's four people with eight, they get a tag. And they keep working their way down the list sequentially until they run out of allocated tags. Say they get to the six point level and there's no tags left. Anyone with six or less tags does not draw on the preference point draw. You're just, you gotta wait. So he or she with the most points gets the tag. So in Wyoming, the first thing they do is in this draw is they say, all right, here's the regular draw, here's the special draw. And 60% of the non-resident allocation goes into the regular draw, the lower price draw. 40% goes over into the special draw. And that, that's just a split of where the tag pools go. And then they do the draws within each of those. And I believe they start with the special draw first. And they go there and within that draw, they split 
75% of the tags within that special pool go to the people with the highest number of preference points. So they allocate them based on a true preference point system. The other 25% are random with no respect for anybody's point totals. So there's just about always a chance that you could draw in Wyoming in that random draw, so long as there's enough tags that there's a random tag available. And in most of the deer and most antelope units, there's enough tags that there will be some random ones. Apply. I mean, and some people say, I'm just going to buy a point. I get buying a point if, it, if you have a sca uh, calendar conflict or you just, I don't want to front the money. Okay, that's good. But if you have the money and it fits your calendar, you may as well apply because maybe you're one of the lucky people in the 25%. One of the things you're going to see in Wyoming is, and this applies to deer, is they have regions. So when you look at the applications, you're going to see that you can apply for region A or region G or K or W or Y. And then there's also some limited entry units. So in your head, be thinking about the difference between a region and a unit. So. As non-residents, these region tags are a bundle of the general deer units that Wyoming residents can just go and buy the tag over the counter. We as non-residents have to pick a region, which is a bundle of those over, just general over-the-counter units. When I say over-the-counter, I mean for the residents. For us non-residents, they're a draw. So you say, all right, I wanna go hunt region A. All right, you apply in Region A and there's a whole bunch of units that make up Region A. You got to hunt in one of those units. Or you might say, hey, I want to apply for a really hard to draw tag in central Wyoming and I'm going to apply in unit whatever number. If you draw that tag, that's the only place you can hunt for the only type of deer that limited permit allows you. Many of the region tags allow you to hunt whitetails well after the time when the mule deer season closes. So don't overlook that opportunity. Wyoming has some great deer hunting, both mule deer and whitetail. So a lot of people are comfortable just applying for a region tag because they're, the region tags are pretty easy to draw until you start getting further west. The further west you get, the harder the region tags are to draw. Uh, but when you draw, you've got a whole series of units that you can, uh, can hunt and you have to go and read what the season dates are for each of those units because there will be some units within the region tag you have that have different rules and different season dates, different restrictions. So make sure you read that. When it comes to pronghorn, Everything for non-residents is limited entry, and it's by unit, not by these bigger regions. So just think about that. When, when you're reading that, that, that's what that means. Very often people say, well, are there any short-term options? I've not been in the Wyoming system for a long, you know, I don't have a ton of points, da, da, da. Uh, with the big tag cuts we've seen in 2020 and some that we'll see again in 2021, the days of leftovers in Wyoming are rapidly going away. There's still some units that you can draw with low point totals, but the reason is that access is difficult. So there's a little bit of trade off there. Okay, you get to go, but you're gonna be struggling to find a place to hunt. And if you kind of look at Wyoming, I-25 runs mostly north to south in Wyoming. Once you get west of that, you start, most of the units have a lot of public land. If you're east of that, public land is a lot harder to find. And well, since we're talking about access, one of the beauties of Wyoming is it's, I think, six, low 60% public land. And by public land, I'm talking about Forest Service, BLM, and state trust lands. Now, in Wyoming, the, their rules about hunting the state trust lands, these little powder blue squares you see on your map, you can hunt them by the function of having your hunting license, but you can't camp on them. 
So you add all that together and there is a lot of ground to hunt in Wyoming. And then they have two other programs, wonderful programs. It, one is HMA, Hunter Management Area. It is some of the best hunting properties in Wyoming. You have to go online and apply. And what it is is a private landowner is being compensated by Wyoming Game and Fish for the purpose of allowing public hunting or even to allow the public to access public lands beyond or controlled or blocked by their private lands. The other is walk-in hunting areas, W-I-H-A. And it's just like the name implies. You park at the designated parking spot and you walk. Amazing hunting on those properties. So some of you might have a younger hunter in your house under age 18. Um, Wyoming has special youth pricing for younger hunters. It's if you are applying in the regular draw. If you try to put them in the special draw for the higher odds, you're gonna have to pay the special price. But these youth applications go in with a discounted price in the regular draw. You must be 12 years old to hunt in Wyoming. Uh, a couple other things related to that, you have to have hunter education. If you were born after January 1, 1966. And one other thing we often get asked is, what's the you know blaze orange or hunter orange requirement in wyoming you either have to have a hat that's visible from all sides or a vest visible from all sides uh, that is orange whereas some states you got to have both or most states you got to have a vest uh, wyoming you only need one or the other uh, are there any weapons restrictions imposed by wyoming for their short range weapons yes go and read what the rules are every state has them don't, don't just assume it's the same as what's in your state. One thing you will find is Wyoming has hardly any muzzleloader only hunts. I think there's one or two pronghorn units that are muzzleloader only. I think there's one archery unit that is archery only. But go read the regulations because if you're willing to hunt with a bow, on whether it's a region tag or even some of the limited entry tags for both deer and pronghorn, you can come and hunt earlier if you buy the archery stamp. And for those of you uh, who, it, it might not be the case in your state, Wyoming does allow crossbows in archery season. Uh, then can you buy a point in Wyoming? In some states, you get a point just for this purpose or, or by the fact that you did not draw that year. That's how it was in Wyoming up until about four or five years ago. Now, if you don't draw, they don't just give you a point. You have to go in the point only period that starts July 1st, and it usually runs through the end of September. I think last year it might have ran through the end of October. Uh, but you have to go there and buy your point at that time. So if you don't draw in 2021, Later this summer, you have to go there and actually buy your point towards the 2022 draw. So if you forget to do that, you just missed out. So don't forget about those dates if you did not draw. Uh, a lot of people ask, can I return a tag if something comes up? Uh, the answer is yes, but you don't get any points restored. So. Is Wyoming worth it? Absolutely, completely, positively, yes. Wyoming is worth it for every species, in my mind. They have a great age class for all species that they manage. There's tons of public land. In, in my mind, even though right now I'd say Wyoming is at way down in one of these valleys, when you think about the peaks and valleys of population numbers, which tag numbers follow those peaks and valleys. In Wyoming right now with deer and antelope, we're at a low point. But even with that, it's some of the best managed hunting in the West. So in my mind, yeah, Wyoming is worth it. So remember that your deadline is June 1st, but don't be the last person trying to get in the door. The systems are always plugged up. It's a challenge. Get it done today. The regulations are out there. You can download them off the Wyoming Game and Fish website. 
And uh, if you want more detail than what's in this video, go to GoHunt.com, sign up for the Insider, use promo code Randy, they'll give you the $50 uh, gift card in their gear shop. But what you're going to get is way more information than we can do in a video. If I was to give you all the information that's out there on Go Hunt about Wyoming, this video would be about three days long. So, good luck. Thanks for watching.